And guys, I want to sort of get started here. Um, we all know the wonderful Mr. Dr. Mark. I've got to know him better um, a couple times. I look forward to Denver to get to know you a little bit better. And, you know, he's just been remarkable helping the field and, you know, all the brains, you know, uh, neuropath feedback, biofeedback, <clears throat> just incredible. Uh, we have something so phenomenal. Um, he is our vice president of clinical strategies for anybody that's new. So I'm going to give it over to him and, and him and Dr. Mark, uh, who coined the term wow. So if Mr. Wow is on here, I'm going to try to find you and, uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> unmute you or you can unmute yourself. So go ahead, Dr. Mark. Thank you so, so much for taking your time out tonight. Oh, you bet. Yeah, no problem. All right. So we have, uh, I guess, 10 questions we're going to try to get through here in the next 50 minutes. And so we'll do our best not to ramble. <laughs> too much on that whole concept there. But uh, so the first question's coming in is how does the quote message get to the brain from the insoles? The foot can't feel the pattern. The pattern has to go through the soles or socks, but it still works. So you're just not giving enough credit to the proprioception abilities that you have. How many times have you been in a room in somebody negative or that's really upset walks into the room and from 20 30 feet away you feel it like I feel this person's off they didn't even open their mouth yet but you can just sense people's energies you can you can feel people from a long ways away so um, they do have science that proves this pattern can be picked up I think dr. working will know the exact distance away um, from the skin so the insoles work further away because they have the, the depth to them, right? So the ridges, the, the space and no space is identifying uh, the code within his thumbprint, you know, but it, there's still deeper ridges which are, are able to feel deeper. So uh, for instance, when I was in chiropractic school, we had to learn as chiropractors how to be super sensitive with our fingertips because when I touch your spine, I need to be able to feel what the bone's doing like four inches below all that muscle and everything. And so to develop skills, it's much like people that are blind learn to read Braille and they start to feel the patterns and it starts to encode into their brain and they can interpret it. Well, we used to play a game in one of the clubs we had in chiropractic school that we would put a piece of hair underneath um, a piece of paper and then everybody would come up and then they'd have to find out where they felt the hair. And then they put two pieces and then three pieces and then four pieces. And over a few years of playing this game, we could find a piece of hair underneath a phone book if you remove the top and back cover. Just that little subtle change of pressure or temperature, we could still pick it up through all of that paper. So your, your nervous system is sending 400 million pieces of data to your brain every second about how the surface of your skin is in relationship to the environment around you. So it's always scanning and probing things. This is a pattern that is perceived by a specific area of the foot that's directly tied to the somatosensory cortex in the brain, which all the neurological information from the brain comes into the brain through this pathway. Then it's giving it a code. Now its job is to decode it, which it does, and then it filters it and it says, hey, is this just like nonsense? Is this just noise that means nothing and it passes through like it's nothing? Or it finds the signal in there. Think of like you're stranded on an island and you got a walkie talkie and all you hear is static, static. You hear a few words every now and then, but you can't make any sense out of it. And then all of a sudden, boom, you got a clean signal. So all we're doing is taking any interference out of all those hundreds of millions of pieces of data that are flowing through that brainstem every second and it's getting the static out because it filters it and then it encodes it back into the nervous system now once it's back now you can pick it up that much easier because you're already familiar with it i'm sure many of you have seen jay do the demo where somebody closes their eyes and puts their hand out and he puts a pen in their hand and says what's that and within a second they say oh it's a pen they didn't even wrap their hand around it and texture and feel it and you know all of that. Just laying there, they immediately sensed it was a pen. And now their nervous system says, oh, I can write with that. I can do all sorts of different things with that instrument. And I know exactly what that is. So it's no different. It's like the code for your garage door. It's specific, 
right, to the motor that actually engages and opens the door. So this is proprioception that is felt uh, from the surface, and it can be felt, I think, 20 millimeters away, which is quite a distance, and still be able to decode what this pattern is of this thing that's coming in contact with my skin. Now, most people can feel their low back, and they feel the spinous process of their spine, like, oh, there's the bone, oh, there's another bone. You don't realize it, but there's like four inches of muscle between your finger and the bone. You're feeling it through muscle, okay? So there's a lot of tissue there that you could still sense and palpate through because the energy's below it that's creating a pattern that you're feeling. So I'm not gonna spend any more time on that one. Um, all right, question number two. How does the brain decide on what to work on first when you put the patch or the tech on? In other words, I have heard that the body self-regulates, and what does that mean exactly in regards to our tech? So you have this- Mark, you want me to take that one? Yeah, go ahead, Doc. Yeah, I, ju I finally jumped on. I, I don't have my uh, name underneath my uh, picture there, but uh, it's, a, it's a new code. You'll have to decode it. I hope you have your socks on. <laughs> awesome. No, the biggest thing that I see is that you have to remember that the code, as it goes up and it actually gets decoded, it's prompting the brainstem in this sensory mantle strip that you were talking about, is that to seek out different areas of dysfunction or dysregulation or inner conductivity problems. So it has a checklist as to what's most important. And absolutely what's most important is the nervous system because it controls, regulates, and empowers everything. So it's gonna go down its checklist as to what is priority. It's gonna take that and do those areas first. So then it'll work out from there that's gonna affect systemically the whole body. So where it works is what the body sees that is necessary at the time, that's most primary, most needed, uh, maybe not from the standpoint of an alert type aspect or emergency, but what needs and what affects most functioning areas of the body, and then it works down from there. Awesome. So um, I think it was inevitable that we wanted to actually talk, um, show a, a couple slides tonight from that will kind of actually answer that question a little bit better too. Um, and so, I don't know, can I share my screen? All right. So, um, I shared this this last weekend in Calgary. And um, before I get into that, I want to just play a couple slides. And so, this is going to help you understand that it doesn't matter what I consciously think should be the first thing that I want to use this tech for. Like, hey, my foot's hurting. I want this to put this on and my foot pain went away. And then in a couple of days, my foot pain may come back and they think the socks don't work. Well, the foot pain wasn't a priority after the first couple of days. And so it's using that extra boost of neurology to fix the next best thing, which you might not even be aware of what's happening. So when we do a brain map, we look at images of the brain and we can see this cross section where we can see three dimensionally. And we're basically looking at the cortex and the bottom right corner is going to be the actual brain that shows two different brain injuries here. We put the tech on and it decided that that's the most important thing that I want to do right now. And so the tech calmed those areas down immediately and then starts working on other areas and maybe waking some things up. Uh, we looked at a pain network on this patient and we look at all the, they have hundreds of networks in there that are being regulated. We find the ones that are the most offline, either red or blue. And then we see the tech comes back online real quickly after that. Now we have the ability to peel that cortex away and actually look at the white matter. And what you're seeing here is called diffuse tensor imaging. And so these are neural pathways within the white matter, and the colors here are just direction of fibers. So it's showing you the multiple directions in which these things are laced throughout our brain. Now these diffuse tensor imaging is the basic pathways in which your brain sends messages to communicate and share information through the networks in your brain. That might be an attention network, it might be an anxiety network, it might be a mood network. It might be a facial recognition network. It doesn't matter which one it is. 
but it has to communicate through these pathways. So now it's not just this invisible white matter that we talk about that processes 400 million pieces of data a second. We actually see and can name each one of these hairs and these strands and tie it to different Broadman areas and so forth. So this is just one person's study. Okay, so I'm not, you know, we're not going to say that anybody that sees this can expect the exact same results in the same amount of time. This is strictly a study because we've done over close to 4,000 brain maps now with and without the tech on, we've had several people that we've seen a few times throughout the year. And so we're going to gather 20 or 30 of these people and then actually put a study together that y'all can talk about and share and all of that. This is just a one person case study. So let's just put that at ease. Now what happened was, is we did three brain maps. We did an initial map, one right after, and then one uh, eight, eight months later when we saw them again. And so here we're gonna see images of the brain from before, after, and then eight months later. The gray areas or black where you don't see any color is actually the normal. And so we wanna see no color at all. If it's yellow, it's two deviations above normal. If it's red, it's four. And if it's slower, it's going to be light blue is two and dark blue is four. So this was back in June of last year. And this is the back part of the brain, the cortex. And we're seeing all of this overactivity back here. So this is affecting memory. It's affecting mood. This person, or sleep. And so this person had a really difficult time sleeping. There was probably a lot of stressful time or a transition in their life that was just causing all this overactivity. It causes um, mental fog and all of that. We put the tech on and it was like dramatic change immediately on the brain map and that was so exciting. But here's what's even more exciting. It's called working on wellness, right? We don't have the order or the priority in which our body's gonna work on things, but eight months later of wearing it 24 seven, we were able, he was able to bring this within two deviations of normal on either side. So everything is gray means it's super healthy. So the brain is working on wellness. So here's the same images from the side before, after our tech, and then eight months later. Then when we can look at the diffuse tensor imaging, we shouldn't see anything here. It should just be the scalp and then black behind it because the images that you're seeing are those fibers out of all those fibers we showed you a minute ago and which ones are, are healthy and, and which ones are slow. And we, so the, the green what would be green is just not even present. So this was the initial change, which is tremendous. Dark blue's gone, yellow's gone, a lot of light blue left but eight months later look at how much better the brain returned to normal we're trying to work on wellness this technology is helping people and you have to keep it on all the time though because when we have that much change immediately we know if you can hold the change for like a month your body's going to be regulated there you're going to have enough control over those areas and then it's going to start working on the next area so this is the back view we can now map the cerebellum and look at motor function and again working on wellness. Thank you, Dr. Working, for that, for that insight on how that works. And we kind of talked about this, but now we can actually see it happening in real life. So I'm gonna stop the share there and get back to the questions. But I think that is an, a, a good enough visual for people to understand that the longer we're wearing this tech, we're never gonna like not need it. It's always helping us maintain. Now, somebody could have a new trauma in between that time and really backslide, but we're always working towards getting it better. Okay, so you can be exposed to a lot of new stress and that could cause things to... Let's go ahead and go to question two or three. I think Mark might have gone offline. So let's describe the mechanics of what happened when somebody had a pain increase when first starting to wear the tech. I myself experienced this very thing. When I got a stress fracture in my foot, and Dr. Dabrinka, this is how I, <laughs> the journey all started. He sent it to me and he said, you gotta try these socks. I think it may help your pain overall. Because my pain was at a level eight and I literally had to get a disability parking placard because I couldn't walk across parking lots. So I got the socks, I put them on, and I immediately had two levels of pain less. It impressed me, but I'm a very clinical objective-based guy. So I came back in, took the socks off, walked around a little bit in my orthotic and my shoes, and immediately the pain increased. And I'm thinking, what? Why did the pain increase? You know. 
And so then I thought, I can't do this. I got to put this, I got to put the socks back on. I put the socks back on and it immediately went, went four levels from the original paint down. So here's my premise. And as I study things and as we see it and brain mapping and that, and as uh, I see different things and read the research, I'm seeing that because it is invoking response in our hindbrain to seek out inconsistencies and weaknesses, it literally amps up whatever procedures of healing is going on at the time. So my fracture healing was slow and it was interfering and maybe there was chronic pain firing or there was abnormal swelling or there was infiltration you know, of uh, interleukins and things like that, which are pro-inflammatory mediators. You know, all these things were hyped up or blocked and not functioning correctly. And then all of a sudden by putting the tech on, it took it to another level and said, oh, wow, I've got help. I got coordination. I've got empowerment. Now I can focus on that. And for a short time, those areas of response are going to go from, if it's a chronic condition, from honkering down in defense mode to hyper healing and working on wellness. So for a short time, you may have increases of signs and symptoms by initially putting the tech on. So that's, that's my best description for that. Next question, number four. Describe somebody who had an amazing experience in the tech, you're increasing, and then three times they use the tech, but after the pain came down, the tech hasn't worked. So it's for pain relief. Well, you will have in a response, as I just said, increased initially. So you'll have that, and then the body kind of settles in. And as Dr. Debrink had said earlier, uh, with the brain mammy, then your body starts looking at other areas of effect. So it may take energy and coordination to other areas initially, where it takes away the focus of that specific area. So it's going through its checklist of primary, and unfortunately, that may be your primary, but your body's looking at another area of pathways that have been opened up by having the coordination that it's now focusing on other areas. And at best I can say, as you saw from the changes in the maps, is to stick with it because you're truly working on wellness and those pathways need to keep interconnecting and eventually you will get to that process of homeostasis and wellness overall. Okay, next question. I'd like to add to that before you, before you- Oh, check. I thought you were gone. <laughs> no, I'll be back. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> All right, so um, the other aspect is we always need to, when we're dealing with pain and we're trying to overcome pain, we always have to think structure function first, okay, before soft tissue. And so you might have, let's just use the analogy, some foot pain. And then all of a sudden I put the socks on and for the first time in so long, your foot pain went away. But the foot pain was there because there was a structural problem with the, with the bones in your foot that you're not articulating them right when you're walking and so it's causing soft tissue damage so yeah you get some relief but then if you keep walking on something that's not functioning right the pain's going to come back you're keep creating more soft tissue damage and so the problem comes back and so it's important that if you're trying to get rid of pain it's not like oh i just use the socks and all my pain goes away i mean that's great to keep you out of pain but um you always have to make sure you're getting to the root cause of why the pain came and the structure has to be addressed if we're dealing with that. So. You bet, that's a great example, Mark, that, that there's other components to that, that it may be secondary effects as well that it's gonna work through and you can have systemic uh, disease, meaning not healthy, uh, and they could be a pro-inflammatory diet and all these different things. So definitely there could be a structural uh, problem overall. All right, next question. Okay, so everyone says the tech works the same in all three products, so why do some people respond more to the other? So again, um, I believe, and I think Jay would agree with me, I haven't really had this conversation with him, but I think the patch works the best and the fastest because it's a closer, closer pathway right to the brainstem, so it has to go through less neurology to get there. Um, and, and we see such significant results consistently with that. 
Some people may already have neurological deficits going on in their foot, like neuropathy or something like that, where their nervous system just isn't as in tune down there because there's a deficit. So they might respond better to a patch than the sock. Or somebody that may have like spasms in their feet it might be pulling the foot away from the pattern enough in the sock, but with the insole, you know, it's a, it's a thicker pattern, a deeper pattern, so you're picking it up on that. Um, we've done maps, as we mentioned before, with one tech, the other tech, every combination of the two and all three together, and we're not seeing any change neurologically in the output of the map, but Doc and I both have patients that we know that <laughs> some of them, when they put the socks and the insoles, they're out of their wheelchair walking a little bit with a better grace than with just one tech or the other. So, you know, for some people, there's, we, we just got to accept the fact that we don't know what 400 million pieces of data are going in and how it's all being interpreted, but it is, and it's making it there. And so find out which ones you feel the best with and stick with that. So, so well, I think that's a great point, Mark, that, that different receptor sites of going on with the patch onto the arm and then even after the 24 hours, you, utilizing it in other areas, it's different pathways. And I think you're exactly right from the standpoint of the feet. One, you gotta have better placement and the socks can move, the insoles can move, the patch as it adheres to you, it's not gonna move that much. And you're gonna have a tendency to have greater neurology and more connection synapses to go wrong and to be rerouted by coming from the feet all the way to the brainstem as to the arm on up. I think you're exactly right on that. Okay, great. So how do we respond to the claim that Vox socks likely just give it an acute placebo effect? Who's claiming that? Um, the, the brain maps debunk that question immediately because we can put placebo socks on somebody and see a 2% change in their brain and we put the sock, the Vox socks on them and it's like 40% or 36 to 40% change. And so this has nothing to do with subjective at all. We're not asking how they feel. We're looking at what's going on in the neurology. And with the study that we published that's coming out, it was a 99.9999% factor of huge benefits for the patient's neurology in the area that matters the most in the brain. That's crazy. And so, um, so you know, whatever. Placebo effect is, is what it is. Um, I'm sure- Well, I hate to say it in general, yeah. everything has a placebo effect. The mind is extremely powerful. Yeah. But from the standpoint, that's not where we stand on. We're absolutely standing on the research and the clinical objective findings. So balance and stability, everybody. Anything else beyond that, it could be you, it could not be you. So one person might have ADD, another person might have anxiety, okay? And each person's using that tech to help whatever that was for them. And so, you know, there's, it's innate. Your own innate ability is doing the healing. The Vox does not heal any of you, okay? We can't give the credit to the tech. The tech is just helping reorganize the way you're processing neurological information and your own innate ability that's been trying to heal everything that it can, but it seems to be spread so thin because the resources you've given it, it's using all of those resources and this is the best you got. Now all of a sudden you got 30% more. Oh man, where are we working first? Let's get the upstairs. Let's get the left room. Let's get the right room. Eventually enough workers working on this, working on wellness long enough. And it's not just the socks. If you're into your health, you're, you're, being, you're paying attention to your diet. You're exercising. You're not exposing yourself to toxins. You're, you're concerned about how much Wi-Fi stuff we're exposed to because all of these things are hurting us and kicking us in the teeth and knocking us down. So the people that have great lifestyles that are already healthy, they respond amazing to this tech because it's helping all the things that they do get there better and faster and they can see greater leap forwards for somebody that has more health issues they're going to see a drastic higher number on the map percent change, but it takes a lot more work to build in health than it does to maintain it. So, um, you know, we use this in conjunction with a healthy lifestyle. It's not just relying on socks for my health. Okay. It doesn't work that way. Time frames of people. 
So that's the exact same answer there. Why is there different time frames for people to see results with the same issue? Now, if you're going to give the example of plantar fasciitis, I have to go back to the structure function thing. That's a secondary thing to the talus and the navicular being out, causing the arch not to glide in the mid step, and that literally starts pulling the tendons from the bone. That's called plantar fasciitis. So you have to fix the structure function of the foot to get that. And then the other thing is everybody has a different strength in their immunity, has different resources available with inside them as far as proteins, vitamins, minerals, and how they're able to absorb and get them to the end result. This is what's necessary for the repair. And so it's not just the socks. The socks are saying, hey, we're funded to bring a lot more workers in, so let's bring them in. But you gotta be eating the right food and avoiding the things that are gonna interfere with the job to allow that to happen. Absolutely, you've got to have the resources available. So a lot of people that are in that situation, it's blood sugar issues, it's dehydration, it's systemic underlying aspects, pro-inflammatory diets, all these things play into this as to how people react. And then of course can come on down to genetics as well. Right, and your attitude, all right? The mood plays a huge role in the next version of your cells. And I'm sure most of you have heard some of the lectures we've done on, on the body healing itself and the different types of tissues and how your moods are gonna control whether those genes are ever expressed or not. So keep a good attitude and be a positive influence for those people in your life and, and just be real. This is something that just helps optimize your neurology. You really don't have to know it much more than that exactly how it happens. You know, we don't know with our cell phone, like how do I watch movies for my cell phone, really? I mean, somebody told me it just comes from a satellite that we can't see that is sending down a bunch of ones and zeros in a different order that allows every one of those pixels in the screen to color a different color and then for noise to come together and give a sound. I accept that, <laughs> okay? I don't know exactly how it happens, but I know that it's sending information from here to there and I get the benefit for it. Do we all sit around and question, how the heck is this phone working? I don't understand how it's working. I can't tell anybody else to have a phone until Everybody knows exactly how it's happening, or at least till I know how it's happening. Do you really care, or do you just want the benefit of being able to make a phone call and watch movies? Okay, so we don't get hung up on, on the, the little things that we don't understand. We know that it does work. We know that it does send information. It decodes your brainstem and the AP part of your, of your brainstem, and that filters it, and then it encodes it back into the nervous system. Now, every time you get close to it and experience it, your body thanks you. And it's like a symphony goes off in your brain and everything functions better. In order to realize the same results when wearing the tech, will I have to wear the tech forever? Are the effects cumulative? Well, I could just go show those hockey player videos again. And so the longer you wear it, you're working on wellness. Does it mean that I'm gonna get my brain perfect and I'm never gonna be exposed to a toxin or a microwave or bad water or negative energy from somebody or a physical trauma, okay? We're always gonna to need to work on wellness. We always do. I take my supplements every day. You think the amount of supplements I've taken over the last 40 years, I would have had enough to last a lifetime? No, it was enough to last till tomorrow because I need the resources available. So when you've seen this happen to your own brain, the first thing that everybody says to me is, why would I ever take these off? And I'm like, yeah, that's how I responded too. And it's like, I get that. You find something that helps you so much and it's so simple. I mean, really, what's the argument? It's a $35 pair of socks. I mean, why is it such a, 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 an issue that some, I'm not gonna try it, I don't believe it, show me this, show me that. Just wear it, if you don't like it, return it. You know, it's just that simple. And so, yes, they're cumulative. Once you heal the area you've been healing, your body's sufficient with that. It doesn't need to give all the extra resources there anymore. It starts giving it to the next best area that you can do. Now, you start changing your lifestyle and start eating better and start treating yourself better. You're going to see a much better version of you evolve over the next eight months, 12 months, year, two years. A much better version than you ever would have been if you never found this tech. It's not a slow decline until we drag our last breath. It's live life to the fullest until I go home, right? Till the very last day. You run anything to that, Doc? No, I think you covered it well. I think that's good. 
All right, you want to do this one? Well, I think the biggest thing when you see it, it all depends on what the practitioner is, is in for. Is he for the patient or is he in there solely to make money? I've always been thought when I see something like this is that, you know, the income that you receive is a product of how many people you've actually helped and the services that you've given. You know, I understand when you look at numbers, to me, from the standpoint of why would you do that and, and change it when they can make so much on an orthotic and that, it's all about are you willing to help the person and get them healing fast. I've always thought that if you actually heal the condition and get them excited about the process and healing the condition, they now are excited and refer more people to you so you have a larger base instead of seeing the same patient over and over and over. You know, in my 42 years of practice, I, you know, had wellness patients, and then I had patients that were always in and out and back and forth and having all kinds of conditions. It was much better serving the ones that understood everything and really got into uh, the standpoint of wellness and referring people that they cared about for wellness, and that pretty much took care of itself. So, you know, it depends on where they're at. If you're looking strictly on volume and numbers and you have to rely on constant influx of people, then possibly you would want to look at the profit margins. But to me, from the standpoint of facilitating the absolute best care for your patient, by having the technology through Vox Life, there's nothing better and you get better results, better reputation, better referrals, right on down the line. And, you know, we're very active, our patients are gonna end up having other conditions uh, as time comes on and be able to treat them. So just having an overall positive effect. I didn't address the actual numbers, Mark. If you wanna do that, you can, but when I saw that question, that's what first came to mind uh, to me, was where are they at? Are they in for the patient and getting maximum results? Or are they yeah. in there to just turn a profit and see numbers? So well, you've I'll got to decide what practice you want. Let me just expound on, on those two things that you said. So from the, the looking at the numbers and so forth, you're not really comparing apples to apples because we're not trying to replace an orthotic. If somebody's into orthotics, they're dealing with the structure function of the person's foot in a very specific way, which needs to, to stay on track and do that. So for those patients, we would use the socks or the patch. And so we're not in competition with anybody. This is a service that they're going to add to the practice and it's going to increase the bottom line because that person's going to have such a faster better results that they're going to tell like dr working said that many more people your goal in practice as a healthcare practitioner my goal has always been to get the patients better as quick as possible and return them back to wellness and the faster we can do that the more referrals come from the person if I take somebody that I could fix them for $2,000 and get their spine on that center of gravity line and get a curve back, but instead I take $10,000 for a year and never get any curves changed, are they telling all their friends about me? Or, or are they just like, I'm, manage, I'm being managed by this guy, I'm being managed by this guy, but we change things radically and then release them. They come back for wellness care and then we bring 10 people with them. So, you know, we want to get people better faster and keep them well. That's the goal in practice. And, you know, I just kind of have to say shame on you if that's not your goal. I mean, if, you, if, if getting somebody better and making them leave happier is not your result because you lost, you know, 10% of the money in, in the deal that you could have possibly gotten out of that patient, that's not what it's about. Find ways for that person to spend that money on something else that's going to help their wellness. So now they can do more for the same amount of money and they're that much happier. So well, yeah. And the other thing, uh, Dr. Mark, is you got to realize that by having the tech, that orthotic is going to work better. The, the response to that and what it does in the correctional structural type problem is going to be accentuated plus everything else that that practitioner does. So by starting with the tech and going into other modalities, is really the the process that they want to they they want and should follow, and it's going to make the patient appreciate every modality that has been done to them that much more because they're already in the zone, they're already balanced neurologically, and so they're going to get the most out of their treatments. And we're hearing that from 
back surgeons to dentists to podiatrists to chiropractors. So we have so many different blends of doctors and healthcare practitioners that um, we're hearing the same thing from everybody. They love the fact that it's helping them get better faster. And we introduce it day one. This is going to improve your neurology so much that everything we're going to do, we can get you there in half the time. And they love that. And that's a true statement, too. We see them stabilizing so much faster when we can address it with this versus without it. Um, you know, I didn't really look at this question before to give you, you know, put a, a whole lot of thought into what would be a 30 second commercial, what to say to somebody introducing a business. I think it, it, it's not so much what you say, but it, it's making sure that you do say something into the extent of what it is and why you're doing it, you know? And if you're gonna introduce it as a business, you have to talk about money. Everybody's so afraid to talk about the money and they're just doing it for the right reasons and for the heart and for helping people. No, everybody's doing it for money too, okay? Every, money's not a bad thing to talk about, you know? and so. It has to be a personal thing like, hey, I got involved with this new business. I've seen so many people's lives changed. It's been so tremendous for a simple product as a patch or an insole or a sock, but it has neurotech in it that does amazing things to help your body finally get to a new level of healing that you haven't before. And you know what? This business opportunity is allowing me to pay for my kid's college. I am so excited to be sharing this and growing this business. And I thought of you and I thought of what you do and how this would be so impactful for the people in your life too. And I think that you could find a reason or you could find, you know, the reason in this like I did and how it's helping people and how we can really kind of set ourselves up for a plan B in case anything ever happened to our plan one, you know, or our plan A. So something to that extent, make it personal to you. You got to have your why. You got to know why you're doing this. And people are going to follow you, not because of the numbers or because of how much money you make or this or that. They're going to follow you for what's making your, your, your clock tick, you know, what's making your heart beat. What is it that you're passionate about? And why is this so important to that? And when you make it personal and you got your own testimony, and then you can piggyback that with not only did I get my, my life back in, in this way or that way, but now I'm enjoying more time and freedom with my kids and we're able to take trips now that I have never been able to take in 15 years because of the income we make because we've helped so many people. I mean, let people know that they can make a business out of this and really have some good income. It's a product that has absolutely zero competition because there's no other there's lots of wearable technology so they get it that wearable technology should happen and there's all these new superhero movies where people put on a suit and have all these extra powers so that's not so far far-fetched but we have the ability to enhance somebody's life that fast and actually make a good living off of it at the same time, there's a lot of people that would like to bounce from their jobs and they're tired of working nine to five and, and never getting ahead and, and having debt they can never pay off. And there's so many people out there that an extra $500 a month would absolutely change their life. That's one sock and soul party. Hey, I can show you how we could just have some friends over and in one party you can make an extra 500 bucks. Would that help you? You say like, Half the divorces would, would not happen if the, if the family had an extra 500 bucks. That was a crazy statistic I heard. And, and, and again, half the, half, the, half the country, North America, you know, Canada and, and the United States, $500, they don't have $500 for an emergency. Like if, if they had an emergency pop up, they don't just have it to be able to deal with that. And, you know, and, and so this is a great opportunity that people can make some really decent income and, and be part of a movement where everybody's, you know, on the same team. We're all helping each other. It's so much fun because we're actually impacting healthcare in a way that nobody's been able to do in 100 years. You know, and I honestly believe that. Well, and Mark, I think that it, to be the compliant and, you know, the, the biggest thing on that is sticking to the wow principle working on wellness. So I would enter a conversation. Have you, uh, have you been introduced or had any experience with a new product that works on the wow principle? So that gets our attention. The wow principle, what's that? Well, yeah, working on wellness. So when you always stay with working on the wellness as to 
certain type signs and symptoms and staying away from conditions and how they affect that and working through that, you're always going to be compliant. And then you'd say, yes, it's been extremely fun. It's really rewarding to see people that are being helped uh, with this that seem to be changing their lives. And it's a fun aspect to share that with people that I like to be friends with and to be around in a business. And it's highly rewarding. So that's, that's, that would be my 30 second go at it. Awesome. So currently we have, I believe, right around 1,300 practitioners that are registered, but there are a ton of associates that are practitioners and never switch their account over. Um, so if you guys have people in your group that are massage therapists, that are physical therapists, there's, there's a list. There's like 20-something different types of, uh, of practitioners that we can get the practitioner account for. Please just have them call. It doesn't cost any money to switch them. And they'll get access to the voxmed.com. And they'll also be able to, um, you know, buy their product, you know, at a practitioner discount, which is great. So I think that's it. And we'll be doing okay. it in 50 minutes. Look at that. Catherine didn't think we were going to be able to pull that off. <laughs> So we have a couple minutes left. Paul, did you want to um, add anything to all that? You're muted still. I unmuted myself in case my kids. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Um, awesome. That is incredible. It's, I just appreciate when it's coming from professionals on how to chat with people. Now, one thing I'm seeing in there a little on the chat is a couple of people are just confused about when um, I can't remember which one of you talked about different foods now. Obviously, that's not directly related to plantar fasciitis, but maybe you can explain what you meant by that in terms of, I guess, the body's physiology and, and what you eat changes, what happens and things like that. I think they're confused what was meant by that. Well, it's pretty, it's pretty evident that there are certain foods, especially carbohydrates and you know, different uh, things that are toxic um, from the standpoint of food colorings and things like that, or the high processed foods that have a lot of nitrates, nitrites in them things like that, that are very pro-inflammatory. Anytime you have a condition that there's already inflammation, it's going to exacerbate that significantly. And when you have a lower extremity type injury because of gravity, that swelling systemically is, is naturally gonna be drawn to the foot, increasing greater pressure in those areas. The greater the swelling in the interstitial and surrounding joint surfaces, the more impingement and restriction of nerve supply and blood supply. And you have to also be concerned about foods that you may have an allergic response to. That again is going to be an inflammatory issue. Most inflammation is acidic in nature. Acidity, again, breaks down tissue and doesn't allow a proper immune response. It could also allow to have an infiltration of calcium to buffer that inflammation, and calcium in the areas creates scar tissue, and again, causes an exacerbation of the healing process, slows it down. So hopefully that wasn't too technical, but that basically is what occurs from the standpoint of chemistry into soft tissue and other conditions, such as plantar fasciitis. Excellent, excellent. So another thing uh, that, um, people are asking, and I know that you guys shared this in Calgary, and of course some people took some shots and put it up online, and I made sure we said that they can't be shared. Um, when will those be available to us? I mean, you may not have a timeline, but an approximation. And please, well, everyone, <clears throat> don't, do not share the slides. We ask you not if you took a picture or a screenshot, that's all. So um, our concern, and, and Jay almost didn't even let me show that in Calgary, is that people will take that out of contents and then not be compliant. Okay, so we're not claiming that if you put these socks on for eight months, your brain's gonna look like that. And so, but it's proving the process that the longer you wear it, the more working on wellness happens. So I would tell people, if you really want those images, share this video. So it's me sharing the images 
talking about them compliantly and correctly and have even more of an effect than whatever you're just going to throw at them because you don't know what those lines mean. You don't know what you're seeing. You haven't done 10,000 maps looking at this kind of stuff. So um, we will come and we will create some new videos. Um, what we're doing is we're going to go back and look at all these people we've seen and we're going to consolidate, you know, consolidate it all. And I'm going to do that as quick as I can. I can't give you a timeline when it'll be done, but we're going to get like 20 or 30 people that have been through the same process as that person. And we'll give all the data to Thatcher and we're going to let Thatcher publish a study on it. And we can publish that this is doing that. Then we'll give you all the videos, the clips, the images, and, and, and what to say and all of that. You know, but until that time, you know, maybe Jay will let me put a short little video that you can share with people, you know, so they don't have to watch the whole hour of questions. And, um, you know, we can come up with something that I can say that's compliant that people can share. So just wait for that, you know, and don't, don't take half screenshots of images from like, you know, from Calgary and all of that and think by posting it, everybody's gonna have this wow effect. It needs to be put into context. They need to know what they're looking at. And they need to know how, what exactly is happening and how the body is responding, you know, in using this extra tech. Is that, is that fair? Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. It's uh, it's yeah. Just to throw an image up there and then not really be able to explain it is, is just doesn't make any sense. Then you'll catch yourself in a, in a, you know, trying to make things up and people will, they'll know that you don't know what you're talking about. So it'll yeah. just discredit you. It'll make the company look bad. If we're putting, if we're allowing stuff out there like that, that's unsubstantiated. Yeah. And so, you know, let that information and let the images come from me. I'm the one that took them and I'm the one that's done all the maps and I'll do my best to get you guys some good material that will, you know, my whole purpose in showing that and the reason Jay let me do it is because we're not saying the tech did it. The body did it. The body's always doing that. It's always working on wellness. And this is just literally helping us do it faster, okay? More efficiently, more abundantly. And so we're giving the credit back to the body. I'm not saying the tech healed you. Your body finally healed you. The tech is helping you, okay? And so it's just in general, whether you're talking about any product, if you're not giving the credit to the product but the body doing the work, you're always compliant. Okay, and so however we talk about this, it's always enhancing your body to do what it does best. And that's heal you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It never judges you and says, you know what? The way you treated me yesterday, I'm not healing you today. You're on your own. It doesn't have attitudes like that. It's just doing the best it can with what you're giving it. Now, if you abused it yesterday, you've given it a lot more work. So it's got to go deal with that work first before it can get back on the job of finishing the structure, right? So treat your body right. Do the best you can. Always work on wellness. Always be the best you can be. Be very conscientious about making sure your body has all the nutrient needs to thrive and survive. And then also do your best to avoid things that we know harm us, you know, that we avoid the toxins, the free radicals, the exposure to too much dirty electricity and Wi-Fi and all those things. Put your cell phone on, on sleep mode at night, okay? Don't let yourself constantly be bombarded by all of these, these things that take away from our wellness, you know? And, and that's that's gonna, you know, two steps forward, one step back. We don't want that. We wanna just keep going forward, be super vigilant, you know, in, in helping each and everybody you know be the best version of ourselves, right? And nothing will help us get there better than having this tech on us so everything else we do is easier and more abundant. Well, I couldn't well, agree. Yes, I couldn't agree more. And if you wanna throw something in there, Dr. Mark work, Working, go ahead. No, I think he summed it up very, very well. He just, the, the, from standpoint of compliancy, working on wellness, that's the biggest thing. And you got to realize that it's invoking response, help coordinating that nervous system so the body can heal itself with its resources. Yes. So there you go, guys. It's, you know, kind of keep it simple. Don't, you know, complicate it. Um, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people that will watch this over and over and over again, and you should, and take notes and, you know, make sure you tag your teams in this. It's so important. Um, they've, they've literally laid it out, the most common questions and, and given their feedback, which I, I totally appreciate. I've learned something tonight. I learn something always because I'm on these calls and I absorb and 
and we're just so appreciative to you guys for for jumping on here and unless you guys want to add anything um i i just truly appreciate you you coming and i i look forward to seeing uh well i don't know if you're there doctor working but i'll see you dr mark in denver and and totally looking, looking forward, forward to it <laughs>